welcome to Google Guardian Online Learning Academy. I am Nikki Laverne. I am your presenter for this session tonight and your host for the Academy this week. This is my friend Christy, and she is going to be signing for us tonight. Christy, I am grateful, thankful. You are, I am grateful, thank you. Okay, so tonight's session is Google Classroom for Guardians. So here is how this is going to work. If you have questions or comments, you can throw them in the comment section in this video. I will be using this presentation. This presentation is available on our website and the website is listed down here, bit.ly backslash gguardians. While I'm going through the presentation, I also have a Google Classroom over here that is pulled up from a student view. So as we go through the presentation, you can also see what it looks like as a student. Parents, as you go through, over here on the sticky note is extra information, little tips that might help you. And then also we have some insider secrets that I'll go into. Okay. When doing, when doing Google Classroom, the very first thing you're going to have to do is join a class. Now, this is pretty simple. Most of the time, the teachers will give the students a code. And this code is available sometimes via email, sometimes they send it via text. But it's a short little code. So what we're going to do is we have broken this down from step one. You will open the Google Chrome browser. This is this icon on your computer. Once you open that up and really browsers just the internet, you'll go to classroom.google.com. And from there, it will ask your student to sign in. Your student needs to sign in with their school account or their district account, not a personal account. When they do that, there's going to be a plus sign located at the top right hand corner here. You're going to click that plus sign and it's going to pop up and ask for that class code. So I have a sample class code that I'm going to put in right now. I'm going to click that join at the top. And what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and put him or me straight into that classroom. Sometimes a teacher will send an email invite. So the invite will show up already in the classes and they just have to click join. So once our student has joined the class, it's important to know our way around Google Classroom. Over here on the left, they have these three lines. Sometimes teachers call this the hamburger, bun, meat, bun. So here's our hamburger. We're going to click on it. And here we have several different options. We're going to look at each one. The first one at the top says classes. This is going to pull up all classes that your student is enrolled in. Clicking on the hamburger again, we see calendar. What's great about this is that it gives us a week. And in that week, every assignment that's due is going to pop up in that calendar. You can also change it out from all classes to a single class if there's many that you're trying to sort through. Next on here is the to-do list. I consider the to-do list a grade saver. So whenever you click on the to-do list, any item that a teacher has that has a due date is gonna be listed here. That is amazing. And you can look to see if there's anything missing. You can look to see what work has been done. So this is a really good spot to see what needs to be done, what's coming up in the future. And it even breaks it down to this week, next week, and then even later. Next in our hamburger is a list of all classes that your students are in. You don't have to go to classes to see all of them. You can click on each individual class. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on Miss Laverne's class so we can see our way around Google Classroom. OK, when you get into a classroom, the first thing you're going to see or you're going to land on is the stream. The stream is a place where teachers post their announcements. Sometimes their settings are where anytime they post a new assignment, it's put there. 
So when a student gets there, they see everything they need to see. Here is a welcome to class announcement. The stream also is a place where students can comment. They can comment to the teacher, but it's important for them to remember that any comment they put here can be seen by the entire class. It's a good opportunity to remind your students to be respectful of their teachers, to use proper language, and to be classy when it comes to speaking to their classmates. Keep those manners in mind because you, you know, reputations are like mirrors. Once they're broken, it's hard to get them back. So let's make sure our students remain respectful and classy when they make comments. So this is the stream. The next part up here is classwork. This is mostly the hub of our Google Classroom. This is where all the important stuff is going to be taking place. So here, to see our classwork, step one is we're gonna click on the word classwork up at the top of our Google Classroom. Once here, you're gonna see all the materials and assignments that the teacher has posted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on an assignment. We're gonna click on this, I have a dream. And here you can see that there's a link to the I have a dream speech. And then underneath it says view material. So we are going to click on view material and up here it pops up. Notice there's nowhere to say turn it in or anything like that. This is just a material, which we'll talk about the differences in just a minute. But here, let's take a look at an assignment. Oops. Here's a, an assignment that's a question. They will type in their answer and then they're gonna click turn in. It's very important that these students click turn in, otherwise they have their answer there, but the teacher can't see it. So there are a lot of different types of assignments. Um, hey guys, I see you all in the comments. Thank you so much for joining us today. Will we get that sweet looking slide deck? You absolutely will. This slide deck is available on our website at bit.ly backslash gguardians. It is there. We also have it available in Espanol. So if you are a teacher, parent, district, feel free to use that to educate your students and your teachers. And the website is also posted in the comments. So the next step, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the different types of classwork. Our next session following this one is turning in assignments with Miss Patty Whittington. She is going to go through each different assignment type and how to make sure that you know your child has turned it in. So the first kind of material or assignment we have is material. Material is information. It could link to a website, a PDF, a Google Doc, a video, all kinds of stuff. Um, please note that just because it's a material does not mean it's not for a grade. It could mean that it's posted to some sort of platform outside of Google Classroom, and therefore the teacher will be grading it outside of Google Classroom. Sometimes students note that it's a material and it doesn't have a due date, so they don't worry about it, and that's a big mistake. Make sure you open all material. The next type is a question. That's one that we have pulled up here. It's a single question and the answer goes in the box that says your answer. Over here in the top, there's an opportunity to do private comments. This is for the student to speak directly to the teacher. And it can be something simple as, I'm not quite sure I understand the question or I wasn't there today, can I hear an audio from it? Anything where you want to reach out to your student or to your teacher personally. Underneath, we have class comments. Anything there can be seen by the entire class. That is not where we want to put our answer. Our students need to put their answer in the spot that says your answer. Once they type it and click that turn in button, it will say turns in. The next type of assignment is an actual assignment. So let's go take a look at one of those. So here I have this getting to know you assignment. When the student clicks on it, it will open up a Google form or a doc or some sort of presentation where the student can edit. Sometimes it will ask the student to attach a document. We have a session that's gonna go into how to attach documents. And again, Patty's is gonna go into how to turn things in. So with this comes usually attachments. 
when the student fills it out and hits submit, then it's marked as done. It is best practice that students always go back in to check and make sure it is marked as done or turned in. Another cool fact about Google is that it saves the students work automatically. There's never, I, they never have to click that save button. So as they're working, it is saving. Sometimes we have those students who will turn in something blank and say, oh, well, I worked in it. It must have deleted it. Fun fact that a lot of teachers and sometimes their students don't even know they can do is they can go back and look at keystrokes and they can go look at revisions so they know when the student worked on it. And they can actually, if they did happen to accidentally delete everything, revert back to an older version. Most of the time, the student never actually put any work in in the first place. Another fun tip is that sometimes students will click turn it in without actually looking at the assignment or doing the assignment. Parents can check at that. Anytime that assignment has been turned in, you can still view it. So if you ask your child, hey, did you do this work? And they say, yeah, I turned it in already. You can ask, I want to see it. And the best part is if it's not been due yet, you can unsubmit it. So if you are not happy with your child's work, you can have them unsubmit, fix it, and then turn it back in. So there's lots of opportunities for our parents and guardians to go in and double check and look behind our kids because sometimes they need that double checking, especially with the younger kids. The next type is a speech or I'm sorry, a quiz. So this Google form is the student will open and then they answer. So I'm going to open up this getting to know you form. Um, this one's done in a form, but a quiz is the same way. So you put in your answer. Birth date, this is not going to be his real birthday. We're just putting in um, just putting in numbers. Favorite cafeteria food? Pizza. Hello. Breakfast pizza at that. Favorite color? Blue. Look, typos. You got to fix that. Blue. I hit submit. And notice it says response submitted and assignment marked as done. They don't have to go back in and hit that mark is done thing. It's going to automatically do it for them. They also have this opportunity in Google Docs. Google Docs will do the same thing. Okay, so those are the four different assignment types. And again, Patty Whittington in the next session is going to go over turning those in, how to make sure those are turned in so that you can give your kids the best opportunity to make a good grade. Next, our next tab is the people tab. This one's actually a very simple tab. It has one purpose, and that is to email the teachers and students in your class. What you'll do is you'll come over and click on the people tab at the top. And this case, I have a teacher because I don't have any other students in the class. You click on that envelope and what it will do is it will open up Gmail with the teacher's email address already filled in. You can type in questions, answers, hit send, and it will send it straight to them. Please note that some districts have the use of email turned off. If that is the case, when you log in, you'll see the teacher name and there will be no envelope. Same thing with students. But you know what? Teachers have an email address. So if you can't email them through Google Classroom, they have another district email that they're going to be using. That's usually posted on their websites, on the school website, and in some cases, even the district site. So take a little time. You can find that teacher communication. Students, if you are emailing your teachers, be mindful of how you speak to them. They are your teacher. They're grading your work and they are an adult. So make sure you use manners and you say please and thank you and that kind of stuff. Um, some teachers, even though they have Gmail, if you don't hear from them in a day or two, I would definitely suggest trying that other email. I think that would help. Okay, and here's one. These are a few magic tricks to help parents look like geniuses in front of their kids. When you're writing stuff for your teacher, um, let's say an email, there are some things that if you want to ask a question about an assignment, instead of retyping everything the teacher said, it's easier to copy it and paste it. Here's some shortcuts that are just two keystrokes that will help you do that. So control A means select all. You hit control A and it's going to select everything on that page. 
Control C, and these are key, you know, the keys on your keyboard. Control C is going to copy everything. And then Control V is going to paste those things. So you can go to a speech, highlight, you know, a paragraph, copy, paste, and then ask the question, hi, Miss so-and-so, I really don't understand this paragraph. Can you help me better understand it? Or can you explain it to me? Those are three short, simple ones that are used every single day. Some other ones, especially one that your teacher or your students will find helpful in classroom is how to split your screen. If you have a Windows device, you can hit the window key and an arrow key and it will pull your screen to the side and you can pick something else to split next to it. That's sometimes very helpful with Google Classroom because they can pull up outside questions or outside websites and type in their answers. On Wednesday, Miss Stacy at six o'clock is doing a Windows 10 tips and tricks for parents. It is going to include all kinds of shortcuts, things on your device that are beyond helpful and really useful. So if you have a Windows 10 device, definitely tune in to her on Wednesday. Another one, teachers use this all the time. Anytime that you're working and you get out of the internet and you realize, oh no, I didn't mean to close that tab out, you can get it back. You hit the keys on your keyboard, control, shift, and the letter T, and it will pull up whatever tab you had last. If you closed it out and had seven tabs, hit it seven times and you'll get all seven tabs back. It's really helpful when students accidentally close something out. It's also helpful as a parent or a teacher when a kid has closed out something real quick and it looks kind of suspicious, you can go pull it back up and know exactly what they were doing. Seems like magic, it's very simple and it will keep the kids on their toes. And the last one is to open a second account. The reason you would wanna do this is if you have a household or a family that has more than one student working on the same device. When that happens, sometimes the student accounts kind of talk to each other and one gets logged off and it kind of becomes a pain. To do this, you just hit the control button, shift and the letter N and it will pull up a new incognito window. So you can have student B log into that one and it won't mess up anything student A is doing. So these are some really quick and easy shortcuts to help you when you're trying to work in Google Classroom or in any document. And that wraps up the Google Classroom overview. We are offering this exact same class on Wednesday in Spanish and again Wednesday evening in Mandarin. So make sure you tune in or spread the word if you know someone who would benefit from Spanish version or a Mandarin version. On the back of this notebook, I have the quote, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much by Helen Keller. Working digitally, living at home digitally can be a challenge especially for those of us who were new to this. We're grandparents trying to figure this out, foster parents trying to figure this out. You know, together we can work together and help our students build some confidence, build those skills in the classroom and really see some success. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Um, right now, it seems like any, oh, we have all of the, oh yes. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We have lots of sessions this week. They're all available at bit.ly backslash gguardians. They're all going to be relatively short between 15 to 30, 45 minutes. We value your time. We know you want help. So we are trying to give you as much as we can in as short of time as we can. And that is it. Thank you guys for joining us. And we hope to see you at sessions soon.